long have you covered the White House? Off and on since uh, 1986. I know I, I look young. I'm just 19. But yeah, I first walked in during the Ronald Reagan era. Has and it immediately been- angered him. <laughs> Did you? What, yeah. what, why, why'd you piss off Reagan? <laughs> Usually just by being there. The first day I, uh, I walked up there, it was actually kind of funny. I, I had met, uh, the reason why I call the podcast, by the way, I just asked the question is the first person I met when I walked in was Helen Thomas. And she told me, whatever you do, it, she said, it doesn't matter what the answer is. It doesn't matter if they answer the question, just ask the question. That way the president can't deny that the issue has been brought before him. So, uh, and, and before uh, you go on, the great Helen Thomas, who was a White House correspondent for a, a reporter for an amazing amount of time, yeah. but was always in the front. She was always one of the people in the front. Yep. Was she Lebanese as well? Yes, I know ma'am. Yes. So, uh, so y'all had a, a connection. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, my, my great uncle brought her family to this country, so it's even closer than that. She, wow. uh, she went and made me a, a good Lebanese meal first day I was in there, and uh, she introduced me to Sam Donaldson, who I'd already met, but um, the two of them were my mentors, and she told me to just ask the question, and Sam told me, and I'll teach you how to yell it loud enough that it gets heard. And so uh, the first time I, I, I went upstairs to talk to Larry Speaks, and um, as I did, I the president was coming through and I was, I was, I was a kid. I was like 25 and I tripped and fell and I was sitting there and all of a sudden, you know, I've got president of the United States standing over me going, well, young fella, you don't have to bow in front of me. And I said, don't worry, I never would. But uh, that, so from, from the get go, I, I guess I had a bit of an attitude. Were you always with Playboy? No, I've covered uh, the white house for a variety of different places, uh, local news and for a, uh, uh, I was there for, I was with Fox uh, Television's America's Most Wanted for about five or six years and covered uh, uh, Clinton and um, one of the Bushes. <clears throat> and then uh, with NBC for a bit when I covered the Gulf War. And then uh, for a community newspaper, I ran two community newspapers for about 12 years in the Washington DC area and would cover uh, the White House on occasion for them. And then for, the, uh, for Playboy for the last five years. Many people think of Playboy as the nudie magazine, but Playboy has some of the best reporting, some of the most amazing articles and stories and journalism. Uh, it, it is a go-to. I actually use it in my class when I'm um, you know, teaching them about feature writing, some of the best writers at Playboy. So, uh, you know, but it does have that stigma of being the magazine with the naked pictures of women. Yeah, I'm just the excuse people get for buying the magazine. Um, but that's, that was, you know, I learned about, I learned about the civil rights through uh, Playboy. You know, I was a kid and I first opened up the pages and there was, you know, Martin Luther King. Uh, I got to find out that John Wayne was a racist by reading the Playboy interview. You know, my, my grandmother, my grandfather marched with Martin Luther King and to see, I didn't know who he was, but then I opened, you know, you know, grandma and grandpa went, went for a walk this weekend and then you open up the magazine, you read what it's all about and you're like a six year old, seven year old kid reading it and you're going, wow, this is a lot different than you know, than just taking a walk with somebody on a weekend. So it introduced me to the world. And um, some of the things I've, I've, you know, some of the people that have written in Playboy, like you said, there, there have been amazing people that have written for Playboy, and I'm just happy to be one of them. Tell us something, um, Brian, that, that <clears throat> we wouldn't ordinarily know, because I feel like in many ways the press has been uh, demonized and vilified by this president. Uh, in all your years as a reporter, have you ever seen anything? I mean, it is it is Third Reich like in the way that he's trying to decimate the, the thank, media. Thank God he's inept. Thank God he's incompetent. Or if he were a competent fascist, we'd be in far more trouble. The simple fact of the matter is Donald Trump doesn't care about anybody but Donald Trump. He says what he says because he's trying to con you. And if you don't see that he's a con artist, you're the mark. And he has treated us all in that press room with disdain, disrespect. His misogyny knows no bounds. The way he treats women is horrific. The way he treats everyone, quite honestly, is horrific. But, you know, he thinks he can get away with a a certain amount of behavior because he's run a private company his whole life. And he's running a country that represents, you know, 320 different million 320 million different people, and he acts like uh, we're all at his beck and call. He doesn't even realize he, he only has a temp job, and he's responsible to us. One thing I could tell you that you don't see on a daily basis, um, and if you haven't been in a press briefing room, you can't really get a feel for it, 
is just how poorly this administration is run. They're in over their head. They're ha they haven't had anybody in the communication staff. You know, so many of them are my children's age. And I remember when I was, you know, younger than most of the uh, communication staff in the White House or, or senior staff members, and you had a healthy respect for them because they had a lot of experience before they became, you know, before they got to the president's staff. Not so with these people. These people are, you know, this is their, their top job that they've ever had. They don't understand why they're there. They're in over their head and they treat people uh, with such a, a horrible amount of disrespect. You know, you, you just get lied to about everything. I, I mean, literally about everything. If I, uh, he says his name is Donald Trump, I really want to see the birth certificate just to make sure it, it's true. <laughs> Well, it's not. His name is Drumpf. <laughs> D-R-U-M. So even that's a lie.